In 1981, the Supreme Court of India asked a very important question. Who will police the police? The times have changed, but the question is still relevant. We are surrounded by self-proclaimed protectors. But who will hold them to account? How perfect are they? Turns out, not so much. We are talking about Amnesty International. It is among the leading human rights organizations in the world. This is what their website says in big bold letters. We campaign for a world where human rights are enjoyed by all. It's an excellent thought. But for Amnesty, charity does not begin at home. They scold politicians around the world, but when it comes to their own employees, they're racist and abusive. Let me give you some background. Eight current and former Amnesty employees have blown the whistle. They have described the work culture in detail and it does not make for good viewing. There are four broad issues that have been highlighted. Number one, a culture of racist abusers. Senior staff use the N-word and the P-word liberally. I'm afraid the rest of it is not fit for television. And remember, this is a human rights group we're talking about. Some employees did manage to complain, but they were labelled as oversensitive. Number two, systematic bias. For black employees at Amnesty, it is like swimming upstream. Their skills are constantly questioned, and that too without any justification. It is the same for ethnic minorities. They're rarely roped in for important projects and assignments. Number three, a lack of sensitivity for minority communities. Here's an example. One employee was supposedly called the black girl. For the record, she had a name, she had an identity, but the white privilege washed over that. Number four, aggressive and dismissive behavior. Employees have talked about abusive emails, especially to offices located in the global south. Now put all of these factors together and what do you get? The classic definition of a racist and toxic work culture. A mixture of white privilege and Western self-obsession. We are used to such reports in the corporate world, even in government jobs. But this is a rights organization, a self-proclaimed protector of human rights, which makes it all the more unsettling. One of the whistleblowers, Catherine Odukoya, sums it up well, and I'm quoting from what she said. We joined Amnesty hoping to campaign against human rights abuses, but were instead led down through realizing that the organization actually helped perpetuate them. So how has Amnesty responded to this report? The report was actually published in October 2020, but Amnesty held off on the press release until now. The final version includes this statement from them, and I'm quoting again, it is a timely reminder that discrimination, racism, and anti-black racism exist in our organization. It has highlighted both the extent and systematic nature of racism and indicates that we must address white privilege wherever it exists. Think about it. How would Amnesty react to such a statement? Imagine the statement coming from a third world country. Would Amnesty be satisfied with their explanation? Unlikely. Amnesty is an overwhelmingly white organization. It has fewer offices in the global south. It has fewer members from minority and non-white communities. But we tend to overlook these drawbacks because the world is seduced by Amnesty's fight for justice. And we are not denying their work. But with such a big shiny glass house, we must question their moral ground. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.